Now, Creality has been uh, really cranking out new printers this year. And they have been killing it when it comes to the new Ender series. Uh, you see a lot of different upgrades, a lot of different variations, and also a lot of different sizes. Uh, and today we have two of the largest footprint printers that they have in this specific series. So for, first of all, on the left side, you're gonna see the brand new Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus. And on the right side, uh, this guy that you see right here, uh, this is the brand new Creality Max Neo that we just reviewed. So which is the right one for you? Well, let's talk about the specs. We'll take a look at the print quality. We'll look at the controls and hopefully that's gonna help you choose which is the right printer for you. So first of all, this is something that really caught me off guard because I thought that they were very similar inside. So first of all, as we take a look at these printer, again, this one right here is the uh, Max Neo. And then on this side right here, we have the Creality 3S1 Plus. The print beds are, the, are pretty much the same, but with some slight differences. I can't really say pretty much the same because one of them is a little bit bigger. So first of all, the, uh, what you're gonna notice between these two is that the Ender Max Neo over here is basically 300 by 300 by 320 millimeter. So I think it's pretty obvious, right? So you can see that this one right here has more height to it. So you're gonna have, if you're looking for taller prints, uh, this one's going to give you a taller print. The print beds, for the most part, are the same. One other thing that I found interesting is that the new uh, Max Neo has a 25-point automatic bed leveling system. Now, the again, the Ender 3S1 Plus, which you see over here, has a 16 auto bed leveling system. So, does that impact the print quality? Does that impact your overall experience. Well, we're gonna see that as we compare these two prints that were printed on each one of these printers. Now, out of the box, you're gonna get with the Max Neo is gonna come with a glass sheet. Um, I've upgraded mine immediately. I really didn't wanna to have to deal with a glass sheet. I prefer the PEI sheets. They're easier to stick and then things come off a lot nicer and I don't wanna use glue sticks. So I went ahead and upgraded this guy here to that. On this side, this one comes out of the box with a flex plate, which I prefer uh, I still prefer having a PEI sheet, but it's better than glass in my opinion. And again, that's just my opinion. Now, besides the sheets, which um, are a little bit different, uh, the other thing that you have to look at is the temperatures, right? So both of these are gonna have uh, the, pretty much a similar nozzle temperature, 260, 260, but then you're looking at a 110C on the Max Neo versus a 100 on the actual Ender 3S1. So this one right here, has a lower temperature rate, but it's only by 10C. So again, 110C versus 100C. How much of a difference is that for you? Now here's another area for us to focus on, is that the Max, right? If you think about the Max Neo over here, this Max Neo has a print speed maximum of 120 millimeters per second. Well, if you've been printing or you're new to printing, advice is really you don't wanna go very fast. Fast tends to lower the quality, but you can tweak and you can make things faster and get some good quality. So some really look for a printer that has a higher max speed because then there's some potential of tweaking, tuning to get faster prints. But that's really something that you have to think about. So again, going back to this is that the actual 3S1, which you see over here, is gonna give you a faster max print speed from 60 to 150 versus the, uh, the Neo is 120 millimeters. Now this is another area that's really big and there's gonna be, again, a lot of folks that lean one way or the other, but this one does not have a direct drive extruder, right? It has uh, it in the back, so when you look at the drive here, you see that little Bowden tube that comes right there? Basically it's feeding it through the back, this filament comes into the tube and then goes into the actual uh, print and then comes out of the nozzle. On the other side, we do have a Sprite direct drive extruder, right? Uh, Bowden extruder versus direct drive and you know, some may feel that this is better for them too because there's no tube to deal with, no Teflon tube, uh, and may appreciate having even the filament spool on the top versus on the side. But keep in mind that, you know, you can actually move that to the top if you wanted to. But for the most part, the big difference that we're looking at here is that you don't have a direct drive extruder on this printer, you do on the other. Now, four millimeter print nozzle, quiet printing, but I will say that I find that the actual 3S1 that you see over here, is quieter. This one is a lot louder, even in its idle state. So, but a lot louder is still gonna be like library quiet. It's just some white noise that you hear there. Uh, PLA, ABS, PETG, right? Um, you know, pretty much similar, except uh, Creality does mention that the 3S1 can support TPU. 
uh, synchronized dual Z access, filament runout centers, and also power recovery are pretty much the same. So let's take a closer look at each one of these. We'll take a look at the actual print quality. We'll take a look at the menus. Um, and then you can see which one is the right one for you. All right, so the first thing that we'll notice about the Max Dio is that it does not have a touchscreen. So that does have this dial that allows you to navigate, but what you'll find is that the software is very similar. So you do have the ability to go into a prepare. The menus are gonna be the same. You see that you have a preheat PLA. We've actually seen this in other uh, printers from Creality. So it seems very similar, except it doesn't really have a touchscreen. Now this printer does feature adjustments on each axis. So you have manual adjustments uh, just by turning a dial, which means you don't need any tools. It does have a side drawer here that you can use to basically store your Allen keys, um, as well as print nozzles, um, any kind of um, cutter, you can have that right here. Uh, we did mention that we updated the print bed uh, to this PEI sheet. I just prefer a PEI sheet, and, but it does come with the glass version. It uses a USB, uh, actually a micro SD, uh, in this area for loading prints, but it does have a USB here connector as well that you'll be able to upload. Now, uh, you'll notice that it does have the bed leveling, so you can see that here on the side. And then obviously we talked about the Bowden extruder, or in this case, uh, you know, how your filament is loading from the back. It does have its sensor. Here is your drive, and then it just goes through this Bowden tube and then gets fed uh, through the front. Um, like I mentioned, it is a little bit louder, but again, that's relative, right? So you just hear some white noise um, as it's just, um, uh, the fan is just a little bit louder on this guy right here. The other thing that you'll notice is that the filament spool is on the side as opposed to the top. Uh, now what will happen, and you're gonna see the printer starting in a couple seconds, uh, and this is pretty standard with um, all these printers. You're gonna have, first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go down and it's gonna check level, uh, and that will do that the first time. It's gonna run a bead of uh, filament on the side and then it will start its print. Uh, my experience so far at these has been pretty similar when it comes to print quality, but we'll see that in a couple seconds. But you'll see it, again, doing its level. After it does its level, it's gonna come and run that first bead and then it'll start to print. Uh, quality on these printers is pretty consistent. I really like uh, just how easy it is. Out of the box, had no difficulties whatsoever. Just uh, tightened two, actually four screws to put this um, area up and then it was uh, out to print. So it didn't take me more than maybe 15 minutes. Um, I wasn't really racing to get it done, but it printed or started printing really quick. Now, taking a look at the 3S1 Plus, basically you do have a magnetic uh, sheet, a flex uh, sheet that's gonna make it easy for prints to come off. Uh, what you'll notice is just like the Max Neo, you do have adjustments on each side, right? Uh, but the actual, uh, actual filament itself is writing at the top as well as the filament sensor. You're gonna find though that there's something different with the actual uh, menu itself or at least how you control the printer. Check this out. All right, now this print menu is a little bit different. Still very similar, it has a lot of the same attributes uh, when you go in to take a look at print and how you set things up. Uh, but you'll notice that the full interface is all touch. So I'm using touch controls uh, versus the dial. That's gonna be something that you should consider depending on the type of experience that you're looking to have. I don't mind either because I have a lot of printers that are either touch and others that are dial based. It's not for me a deal breaker, but it may be for you. Now, one other item to consider is the fact that while this one has bed leveling and has less points, it does have a direct drive extruder, which just basically means is that there isn't anything like you saw in the other where it's being fed independently and then it's being fed into the actual print head. Uh, so this, filament just goes directly in it. There's no tube involved and it's actually going through this again and this is a full metal extruder basically uh, is fed through this area here and it's going to come out at the very bottom. Now this machine is again I put it in the ultra quiet. This one over here is in the quiet. This is in the ultra quiet. Uh, I just don't really hear the fans that loud. It's, it's, it's much more quieter. It's like something that you would have to experience but again if you're using a printer in a common area and you don't have a dedicated room that may be something for you to consider. But again, the noise that you're gonna get from this printer is more white noise. So it's not something that's gonna be annoying. It's not gonna be something that's gonna be bothersome. It's just um, in the white noise category. Now on the very bottom, you're gonna find that you have SD 
for loading. You do have a USB uh, connector here that's going to give you the ability to, again, uh, connect to this port for uploading. And you'll notice that the print experience is very similar to what we saw over there. Actually, the G-code, the slicer, I've sliced them for the same machine, right, same machine profile on both of these. They, they work pretty much the same. Uh, the print bed, for the most part, is the same, except that the height on the other one is a little bit higher, but I'm not printing anything that is too high. So just like the other one, it did its uh, bed leveling, it did it, its check, and then now what it's gonna do is start the print by laying its first bead, and then it will go ahead and print. And it's actually printing the exact same thing as the other printer is printing, so they're working pretty much similar. And you'll notice, again, print experience is, is again, very similar uh, because of, again, uh, from the same manufacturer. Now while this guy is printing, uh, you do have a little drawer here on the side. So you have a drawer. Uh, this drawer, uh, they're relatively almost the same size, but you do also have a drawer here that you can um, store things in, and I have a lot of things in there. So neither of these have a light system, which is one I like about uh, some of the Ender series. Uh, it's something that you can probably adapt something to it, uh, 3D print your own, or maybe Creality will come out with something for both of these. Now let's take a look at overall print quality. And what we did is we printed the exact prints um, on these printers. Uh, Difference is that we have filament. So I had a matte gray uh, Creality filament that I was using. And then on this side, and I switched it to this blue one now. And I also have here um, a silk silver, right? But what you'll notice is uh, here are my rabbits. We'll bring them in on camera a lot closer. The quality of the rabbits is <laughs> almost, it's identical pretty much. So you can see uh, the bottom layer is what they look like. If you look at the sides, you have the seam uh, on the same place, right? It shows a little bit more on this one because it is uh, silk filament, so it has a higher gloss to it, but it's here as well. Uh, and again, each filament brand is going to be a little bit different, but you'll notice that there is some wisps here of filament, and here there's some, but not as pronounced. But all in all, these guys are the same. Now, the other thing is we did is we printed out a cube. Uh, this is a chip cube. And what I found is even in the measurements, uh, these are printing uh, pretty much exactly the same. We'll bring them up a little bit closer so you can see. From a dimension perspective, they look uh, exactly the same. Right? Even when we measured them, uh, the, the print, pretty much the sizing was spot on. And that's the bottom layer there. And you can see what that top layer looks like. So great experience there. Uh, we then also printed a popular uh, item. And we're seeing a lot of these, this guy printed around. We printed him uh, also multiple times. And same skull. Uh, this is at 125% scale. We'll bring this a little bit closer. And what you can see here is, again, these guys, the, the quality is fantastic. The only difference that you hear, have here is that one is using a silk filament and the other one is using a matte filament. And as we turn them over to the side, you can see how nice that detail is. So from a quality perspective, I can't complain or find faults in either of them. Take a look at that. Again, what you're looking at is a different uh, difference is, is pretty much just the filament. It's pretty crazy. Check that out. These took around 13 hours to print, right? I wish they were uh, just much faster, but, but it's 13 hours. You can see what it looks like. These had a 10% filament or a 10% infill, right? And they're uh, exactly the same and a little bit over 13 hours. You can see that quality there. Oh, the other thing that, it, that I'll just note is that there was no supports either. Pretty nice. So. So that's, that's what you have with these two printers. They're both excellent in print quality. They both have very comparable speed. They both have very comparable experiences with what I would just say one of the major differences for me, uh, and it's not really major, is gonna be that this one is just a little louder. Uh, this one over here is a little quieter, uh, but overall, slicer settings, everything that I use is exactly the same. Note, this one has a touch screen. That one doesn't have a touch screen. Uh, I, 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 just, I just can't choose. Fortunately, I have them both. <laughs>